Hi, I'm Arielle Klepper here at Sinai Innovations with three of the panelists from the Psychology of Great Groups. Thank you so much for the really stimulating discussion. I'd like to ask, sort of in line with one of the tweeted questions, there's a really complicated intersect between creativity, the arts, and profit. When you combined all of these metrics together from your different experiences, how do you know when to let profits and loss or ticket sales and things like that take a back seat to the opportunity to innovate, even if the idea may be unpopular, but may be supported by the team or the group at work? If you could comment. In, in my experience, people who say that they're uh, splitting up because of creative differences, it's almost always because of money. Uh, people, money is the is uh, the thing that usually create tension in marriages. They say, but certainly in groups, often um, it's credit, it's other things, but like money, a lot of it. So and a lot of it just has to do with simply determine, just determining really clearly up front what the rules are, so everyone plays by the same rules. I think when people feel cheated, and this is true, there have been some big professional service firms like law firms that have actually fallen completely apart just because some people thought the rules were changed for other people, you know, and then all of a sudden I'm working hard, I'm not making it all the way. Sometimes those rules are actually ingrained in society, so people that work hard don't feel that they're getting their uh, right compensation. So I think, you know, kind of clarifying them and just making sure they're all clear going into it, make the other parts happen, make the artistic breakthroughs, the uh, scientific breakthroughs a lot easier, I think, you know. Fantastic. And to expand on that, could you also comment on how the diversity may improve the communication toward balancing finances and creativity? Well, in some ways, the diversity um, may be that which gets in the way because um, because it's difficult when we have an idea about what makes profit to begin to listen to someone who has an entirely different model. So part of the work that I believe leaders have is to figure out how do we bring together, um, we are always working under a profit model. I don't care if it's a non, not for profit, it's never not for money. It's just not for profit, you know, in the tax uh, way of looking at it. So we're always looking at how do we bring in that which will sustain us, which is financial, and how do we create an environment where what we know is the more innovation we have, the more profit we will have. The more we are able to understand uh, how to bring in a different demographic, the more profit we will have in, as we go forward. So I don't think it's an either or. I really believe it is an and. Um, and, and our difficulty is learning to listen to people who don't come at it from the same place. You know, Cause, because we're really good with you do it like I do it, I love you. You don't do it like I do it, there's something wrong with you. The model has got to change in that fashion. Fantastic, thank you. And could you all lastly comment on something that was mentioned in the panel discussion, which is that sometimes that tension within the groups is important to come up with new ideas, something you've also touched on as well. I think tension is crucial for new ideas because otherwise, if in fact there is no tension, it means that there is no difference, there is no expansion. You know, it's like the rubber band. Without tension, it can't expand. It cannot become larger and more inclusive. And so um, I think it's important for us. And it's important for us to get okay with it because that's the real dilemma for us. We're like, well, you know, I don't want tension because, I, you know, we were taught to be nice and, to make, and especially as women, um, you know, and in a number of cultures. Well, we were taught to be nice, not to have. But tension is not negative. It is the way in which we expand and bring in new ideas and new thoughts. Fantastic. Very much like science, tension is a yes. form of energy, right? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Fantastic to speak with you. Thank you. Hi. So, hi. Ariel here with Sinai Innovations. I uh, just wanted to follow up. We were talking about the complicated intersect between the arts and profits, and then further expanded to discuss how diversity may promote tension in a group that can lead to productivity. You spoke a lot about the different structure of groups and how allowing people to fail can sometimes lead to productivity in these circumstances. Can you elaborate on how that relates to tension, diversity, and profits? Yeah, I mean, I think wow, failure is a big uh, <laughs> is a big uh, ingredient of tension. But uh, I, I think I think there, it's worth probably pulling some of those things apart. Um, when um, I think any any necessary sort of on the road to innovation, you're always going to hit a necessary bump of failure. I mean, especially if you're doing something complex. And I think whether you're in medicine or science or even arts or writing. If you're trying to do something significant, you are doing something complex and you are going to fail. And the notion that somehow really talented, brilliant people are just going to kind of run a glide path to success without hitting bumps is completely impossible. So, I mean, I think there's that, that failure component. Um, 
In terms of the uh, complementary talents of, of groups um, and how um, um, uh, you, you want a certain you know, variety of group of people within, um, does it, I mean, I don't think necessarily that creative tension will come about just because somebody's from a different background. Um, we talked a little bit on the group today about introversion and extroversion, and sometimes you get that. I mean, sometimes it can work together very well, but sometimes the introvert can be very frustrated because it can be a group with a, a completely extroverted group of people, and they feel their voices are getting drowned out. So I think um, um, that kind of... Um, variegated sort of group is, is, is can be more complex, not just about gender, not just about race, but personality, expertise, um, discipline, where you're coming from. And um, it just it makes the job harder of when you want to assemble the group. But um, I think it also can enrich it quite a bit when you get people who feel that they're comfortable within that group, but yet are bringing in a different sensibility of tension and kinship and all that. Fantastic. So a variegated union. Thank you.